Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again, and just doing a little adjusting there. I want to welcome you back to the final two reviews of Martial Arts Movie Month. I'm going to be doing the last two Three Ninjas films. The first one I'm going to do today is Three Ninjas Knuckle Up, which I've always enjoyed. And today is the last day of May. I was going to do these videos uh, yesterday, but I just didn't have time. And plus I wasn't feeling well either. I had a headache and just wasn't feeling up to doing a video so probably by the time that these are done uploading it'll probably already be June 1st but that's okay um, it'll probably be like these will get uploaded probably like by midnight or you know in the early you know hours or something so it'll be okay it's not a big deal but I've always liked three ninjas knuckle up I know this is where people start to dislike the series for some reason um, this movie does have a little bit of a interesting behind the scenes story um, this one's rated PG-13 for some reason but you know I've always liked this one I grew up it used to come on Showtime a lot I used to watch it on Showtime this one and the next one Three Ninjas High Noon and Mega Mountain used to watch those a lot but I also remember renting this one from the video store as well a lot but, you know, this one's just a lot of fun as well. It's a good follow-up, in my opinion, to the first two movies. But technically, this is the second movie, which I'll get into. But, yeah, I've always liked the, the first three the most. But this one, um, basically, what happened was, this was actually the second one that was, it was supposed to be the second one. I know this is going to get confusing, but some legal issue happened where they had to stop making the movie for a short time then the legal issue was resolved they finished the movie but it sat on the shelf for like two or three years and then it got released so i don't know exactly what happened um i heard two things i heard originally this was this was disney now like i said with the first movie that was done by Touchstone Pictures, who is owned by Disney. And they actually started work on this one right after the first one had come out. I guess since the first movie had been a big hit that they wanted to follow up. And I guess what happened was Disney just just didn't think that things were going well. They didn't they just weren't feeling this martial arts thing for them. And they, you know, they stopped production on the film. And then I guess that, because uh, this one this one and the other sequels are released by TriStar, um, who's Columbia Pictures. But I guess that TriStar picked up the rights, and they finished the movie. Like, they probably just bought the rights from Disney, finished the movie, but then there was probably something where they couldn't release it, you know, some legal clearance thing. Which has happened before in movies, because in this one... You know, you have the original kids, and then you could tell which footage was shot later because in that in those scenes, Rocky has braces, and you can see him. And Colt is taller than Rocky, so there you go. Um, and most of the stuff that was shot at the at the you know later was the stuff at the end of the movie, the final showdown, and and all that. And the scene where they wake up and their grandfather's training them, but it's when they stay up late because like Rocky goes hey grandpa and you could like he smiles and you could see his braces so that stuff was shot later so that could be a very possible reason that Disney was just they started the movie but they had doubts so they're like you know what we're just we're just killing this project we don't care in comes TriStar hey we're really interested in the project can we buy the rights? Sure, you know, just you can't release it until this happened. Okay, so there you go. But also I heard that the kid that played Rocky in this one and the first one, he hated acting. He absolutely did not want to do it. He just did not care. And I, I, on the back of the laser disc for Three Ninjas Kick Back, which I don't have. I've seen the like a picture of it. There's like a little interview blurb with the kid that played Colt. And he was saying, like, you know, the kid that played Rocky, he just didn't want to do it. He just didn't care about acting, you know, and that's why he's not in this movie. So I guess that maybe something happened where 
they were filming this and he like told his parents you know I quit I don't want to do this anymore I don't care I don't I just I don't want to do it and there was probably some issues there where his parents tried to get out of the film get out of the contract and there was and it probably held up filming they probably had to stop filming because he refused to come he refused to do it until they they probably offered him more money and that's why they came back to finish the movie and there was probably some they probably had some legal wrangling and had the film put on hiatus or whatever that that's that's probably what happened those two scenarios i know like some people have said on message board and stuff it's no because this movie sucks so much that they couldn't release it no that's just people talking no i just think that it was either disney was just they were not completely confident in the project and they pulled the plug and then tristar bought the project and because they actually yeah they started filming like right after the first movie came out because the boys pretty much looked the same in in this one and then you know then they probably did that and they probably came back and finished the movie a couple months later but they had to wait to release it or because of the kid that played rocky and that's that's very probable because like i was saying I, like i was reading that thing on the back of the laser disc and it was something in the way that they wrote it, it or they you know he said it was something along the lines of like that like he didn't want to do it and he quit and that kind of thing so there you go but i know my buddy matt rambo rap for life just did a video when he, he was talking about what well, was an older video he did but he reposted it it was about terrible like dvd and vhs covers and this movie should definitely be on it because these kids on this cover are not the fucking three ninjas i don't know who they are and neither is that kid that kid they're not the three ninjas none of them are so i don't know what the fucking deal is and that's probably because you know, when the movie came out, this is the poster they used. They probably couldn't get the kids to come back, so it was probably, you know, legal issues involved there. So there you go. But anyway, you know, this one, the second movie, the third movie, whatever you want to call it, whatever, you know. <sighs> Excuse me, whatever place you put it in your, in your, you know, collection. This one, it's the next summer. You know, the boys are spending time with Grandpa again. And there's this Native American reservation, which this evil guy, this evil land developer, who's played by Charles Napier, who's no longer with us, is trying to take over because he wants to build real estate and, and all that kind of stuff. And um, another thing that's going on is he's actually dumping toxic waste and stuff into this reservation. And, you know, they're trying to... Um, oh yeah I'm sorry yeah I, I got got confused about something yeah he's not trying to build see see that's what happens they change the movie no I screwed it I screwed up I'm sorry what he's dumping these illegal you know toxic wastes because he's you know he has owns a waste management company and he's dumping it on this Indian reservation and it's killing the wildlife and some of the people and stuff like that so Basically, what these Native Americans are trying to do is they're trying to expose him and get him in trouble. And the one guy, the one girl, uh, Joe, because this one they put a girl in too, her dad um, gets captured by these guys because he has this computer disc which will incriminate them. So basically what happens is the three ninjas, they save this girl at, a, at this pizza parlor because the guys that work for the bad guy are messing with her. So they get into a fight and they save her and she explains what's going on and they decide to help her and her people. So basically they go on this mission to save this guy and they do her dad who is actually played by Don Shanks who played Michael Myers in Halloween 5 which is cool. And they save him and the rest of the movie they're basically waiting to go to this to this because they have a court hearing set so they get mixed up in some more things like they go to this uh you know this gathering 
and the bad guys show up and they start fighting them and then they uh on the day of the hearing they kidnap the guy's daughter so they go to save her you know and then at the end of the movie the bad guys are exposed and they get put away and the you know the three ninjas are heroes so yeah that's the plot in a nutshell and like i said this is the this one and the next one are the ones that people don't like but i've always liked this movie and you know in the first two movies they dress up as ninjas they fight ninjas and this one they don't you know they don't dress up as ninjas you know um in a couple scenes they wear their colors like when they wake up and their grandfather is like testing them that's about it and then they don't fight ninjas they fight like regular bad guys but that's okay you know that that didn't bother me i mean the movie's still martial arts you know so it really didn't bug me that much well it, really, it didn't bug me at all you know i'm not not complaining so i'm mean, yeah like i said i've always liked this one but i don't know why it gets so much flack i mean this one and I understand why High Noon and Mega Mountain gets flack, which I'll get more into that. But I don't understand why this one does. But, you know, I've always liked this one. I like the story, how they're helping this Native American tribe, you know. And it's, it's a real story. I mean, you know, because there are, you know, these groups out there that, you know, they illegally, illegally dump toxic waste and they get away with it because they pay people off and... You know, people think money is more important than honor and, and everything. But I'm not getting into a political debate, political or philosophical debate now. But I've always, you know, I like the story. It's got good fights in it. Um, you know, it's the original boys. It's the original cast that comes back. You know, Victor Wong is in it. Uh, Charles Napier's in it. Uh, Patrick Kilpatrick plays one of the bad guys. Uh, Vincent Chiavelli, who's no longer with us, is in it. You know, he's been in a bunch of movies. So... You have a good cast in the movie, some recognizable people. Donald Loge is in the movie. Good fights, you know. The movie, it's good. It's a good movie. You know, I don't understand why people don't like it. You know, I really don't. But the cast is good, like I said, because you have Victor Wong coming back as Grandpa once again. And this one, you know, this one he kind of takes a backseat a little bit. But in, you know, the, there's one fight scene that he's in, which was cool. But, you know, he's more of like a mentor, you know, this time he's not really getting in on the action like the first two movies. But that's fine, you know, it's, I still enjoyed his performance. I still enjoyed that he was in the movie and he got a little action in there. But, you know, this time around, you know, he's more kind of off to the side, you know, well, you know, you guys shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you know. The li you know, listen to the flowers, if you can hear them bloom, you know, they'll tell you anything you want to know. That's like the message in this movie. But yeah, I mean, I like the, you know, I like the character. I thought he did a good job in this one, you know, but he's off to the side a little bit. You know, then you have Charles Napier who plays the bad guy. Um, I think his name is Jack Harding and like Victor Wong, he's no longer with us, which is unfortunate. And Charles Napier, you know, you guys know him from Rambo First Blood Part 2. Um, he was in the cable guy he was on a couple episodes of renegade he was in the blues brothers you know he's been in a lot a lot of movies and you definitely know who the guy is a guy who needs no introduction who's unfortunately no longer with us but you know he always plays a, a good bad guy you know he definitely did in this movie you know like i said this is more of a kid's movie but you know he, it gets to be goofy and stuff which is always fun you know it's always fun to make fun of yourself and and be goofy and you know take a lighter step so yeah he's having a good time you can tell you know he was a good bad guy you know then you have the same boys you have michael trenner as rocky who comes back and like i said i don't know exactly what the extent of the legal reasons was behind this movie but you know i did hear that he hated acting he just did not care for acting which is why he only did these two movies and best of the best two which he was in but I do. I still like the character. Like I said, Rocky is like the Leonardo and Donatello of the group. You know, he's wise. He's older. He doesn't really want to fight. You know, it's the fight, the final option. You know, that kind of thing. But you know, I've always liked the character. You know, growing up, Rocky was my favorite. But I think, you know, Colt is now my favorite, and Colt is played by Max Elliott Slade once again from the from the previous two movies. And Colt's always been my favorite because he's like Raphael. 
you know, he's pissed off, you know, he's always mad, he always wants to fight, you know, he thinks fighting is his first option, you know, the only option, but he's hard-headed like me, so that's why I like the character so much, and then you have Chad Power come back as Tum Tum, now, like I was saying, in Three Ninjas Kick Back, you know, he looks the same age, but he's not really, you know, he's supposed to be stocky, you know, in this one, it's the same actor, and he's, you know, he's not fat, but he, you know, he's a little stocky, he's got a little stock on him, but, you know, and then in the next movie, he completely changes again, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, they, the boys, you know, like I said, they shot this right after the first movie, so they're probably the same age or a little bit older, they probably hit a birthday in between, you know, but, you know, they're, they're, they had chemistry, you know, even in this one, you know, they definitely had chemistry, you could tell that they were actually brothers. They actually cared about each other. They were having fun. They were having a good time. And you can absolutely see that. And then the girl that plays Jo, um, I liked her. You know, she was good for what she did. You know, she gets involved in this adventure with the guys. And, you know, she's good. Good support. You know, you have Don Shanks in the movie for a little bit as her dad. The guy who played Michael Myers from Halloween 5. And he was good. I enjoyed him. I didn't know, like growing up, like I said, I used to watch this a lot. I didn't know that it was Don Shanks. And then I got on the internet and looked it up. And I found out he was in the movie, but I didn't know who he played. And then I watched the movie and I saw that it was him. I'm like, oh my God, it's Michael Myers. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, that's really cool. And then Vincent Chiavelli is another actor who's been in a lot of movies. You have definitely seen him. He was in Tomorrow Never Dies. He was in Desert Heat with Van Damme. Um, he's been in a lot of films, and unfortunately he's gone too. He's no longer with us. But he's like, I think he's the mayor or something, and he's kind of in cahoots with the bad guys. So he doesn't care what they do, you know, as long as they're making him money and stuff like that. So there you go. But good cast in this movie, good supporting cast, and good lead cast as well. Um, you know, good fight scenes, which I'll get into. But the movie, when it came out, I guess because the the release was prolonged, and I guess they didn't promote it, it didn't make really any money. It only made like $400,000 or something. It really didn't make any money. And I guess, that's like I said, I guess that because they just kind of released it without promotion and, and everything. But, you know, I guess another reason why people don't like it is because of the environmental plot. And I do notice that a lot of movies that were made with plots like that in the the 90s like on deadly ground with steven seagal fire down below people don't like those movies because at that time people didn't really didn't want to hear about the environment people didn't care about the environment i mean people cared but not to the extent of what they do now you know when al gore did that movie i forget what it was called but you know he won a nobel peace prize he won oscars and all this shit all of a sudden people care about the environment but it's not fair, you know, why do, how come Al Gore gets a pass, but, you know, this movie, On Deadly Ground with Steven Seagal, which is a good movie, Fire Down Below, which is a good movie, those movies get, you know, they get shit on, and I don't get it, you know, oh, we don't care about the environment, oh, but Al Gore did this great documentary, oh, now we care about the environment, now we see what it's doing, you only watch it because Al Gore is in it, but, it's bullshit, but, it's a good movie. I don't understand why people don't like it, but, um, you know, there's this fight in the pizza parlor where they meet this girl, and I like that because they're using, like, the pizza trays, and, um, the, uh, they're using, a, a pool ball and stuff, and this one guy pulls a knife, and they disarm him, and, you know, they're, like, bumping into arcade games and stuff like that, and all these kids are like, who are you guys, you know, where'd you learn martial arts like that, and I thought that was really cool because, you know, then the grandfather comes in and, like, chews him out. And that's right, you know, because martial arts, it's not to be cool. It's not to be popular. It's not to get girls. It's for self-defense. You know, so they're, like, showing off and stuff like that. You know, so rightfully so, he's going to be mad. You know, and then they, like, mess up the pizza shop. So um, the grandfather gets him a job there, so they have to clean up. And there's, like, a montage, and it's pretty funny. You know, then they meet this, you know, they meet Joe... And they find out what's going on, and they go to this to the waste plant, and they find her dad there. And they they uh, when they escape, like, cause they like fight these guys and stuff, which is cool. Like the workers in there, 
you know, they get on the back of this ice cream truck, which is a pretty funny scene. And they're like, yeah, we found him, you know, he's in there, you know, they will have to go get him. So they go back at night and they rescue him and they got like all these different weapons and they got to get this disc and the bad guys are after him. Because like I said, the disc has all this incriminating information on the bad guys. So like they're running through like all these towers of like of paper and stuff and they're like climbing up on the paper and fighting on there. They get on this conveyor belt and they turn it on and it like shakes so they get off and they're like, Ugh, which is pretty funny. Like there's these two dogs and Tum Tum pulls out like a sandwich and feeds the dogs, which was cool. And then they escape and the dad comes back and they're thinking about, you know, what they're going to do for this trial and everything. And then they have like this uh, party or gathering. I'm not sure what the Native American term for it is. And the boys go... And they're doing like these native dances and then they're like well let's show them our dance and they're doing like this martial art dance which was pretty cool and then the bad guys show up and they're fighting like around this bonfire and stuff which is pretty cool and like the um the grandfather's in there so he gets like you know grandpa gets involved in some of the fights and stuff which was cool and then like the trial comes up and they kidnap the girl like the bad guys hire these uh this biker gang to kidnap her so the boys go after him and they're, I think, uh, I think it's Rocky, like, they're driving, like, Rocky's driving, and Tum Tum's like, you know, I promise I'll never, you know, I'll eat all my green beans, I promise I'll be good, just, I don't want to die, which is funny, and they go to, like, it's kind of like an old West movie, and, yeah, this one, I guess, could be, you know, a tribute to Westerns, and they have, like, this showdown with these bikers in this old West town, they're, like, fighting them, and they're, uh, like they hit this jukebox and it plays like this fast song and they're beating them up and then it plays like this uh like uh i forget what the the term is but it's like a hispanic song like dun dun dun, dun like a waltz it's a waltz that's what the the term was and they're like dancing and then like beating these guys up and then it switches back to the song and they go back fast and stuff you know and then they find the girl and they get her out and they get back to the town to the meeting because she has the disc because they tell uh, Don Shank's character like you know you better do what's right you know you better not give him the disc and stuff so then they come in and he's like wait a minute here's the real disc and they incriminate the bad guys and they get away and then the boys leave and they're like well where'd they go it's like well I guess our heroes you know they gotta go fight another battle so you know they go home and their grandpa's there and he's like remember what I told you about listening to the flowers yeah they're not saying anything exactly you know it's what you interpret and then they do like backflips in the movie and so i guess people don't like that because they probably thought it was a ripoff of ninja turtles 2 and 3 when they're flipping and stuff and dancing but whatever but overall you know i enjoy this movie i don't understand why it gets flack i don't understand why it gets hate but i've always enjoyed this one like i said i did grow up with this one a lot as well watching it on tv and uh, renting the video as well but a fun movie a good movie a good entry so definitely check it out you know if you'd like to but anyway guys um i hope you enjoyed this review of three ninjas knuckle up and stay tuned for the last movie in martial arts movie month which will be three ninjas high noon at mega mountain so thanks for watching take care